How are we all going today? Yes, it is in this week's episode of The Enthusiast. I have a very, very jolly full this Christmas ham size 2023 Christmas special. So let's get into it. I hope you enjoy this massive Christmas special. So let's go. We are going to be talking about, we will have special guests. We're going to have new segments. We're going to have, and so much more on this, this year's, on this very first edition of this special episode of The Enthusiast. It is Christmas. It is the Christmas special on The Enthusiast this year. In the quick fire news, few public... We're going to be doing this quick fire style. Yes, it is. It's quick fire news style. It's quick fire news time. Few publications will be releasing their final Phantom comic of 2023 with this year's 2023 Phantom Christmas special coming out in the past week. And just look at that. Look at that. A very, very nice cover done by Jeff Weigel. Look at that awesomeness. Look at that. that. There's a close-up picture of that. Awesome cover. Absolutely awesome cover. I love the colours that he's, Jeff Weigel has used on this wraparound cover. And this story, this book actually features, I think, four or five stories in this book, which is very, very common for a Christmas special to be doing that. And it's got to be very, very common for a Phantom Cave Christmas special, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, we've had so much fun on this show this year. We've gotten through, we've, we have done season three, we have done season four, and next year it gets even bigger and even better when season five of The Enthusiast just comes around the corner and it gets even awesomer and even more phantom beautifulness. Okay, another thing we've got to talk about is that there's going to be a new, new year, a very, very new year's special coming out by few publications in issue number 1961, Ghosts of the Ships, part, par, par, ships past, Part 2 and 3 of The Man and the Beast, Part 1. And that's on sale by on the 4th of January, 2024. It's a New Year's special, full-colour original stories by Jason Paulos. And by Andrew Continent. Continent. Is he a continent? No, he's a real person. <laughs> yeah, he's a real person. He's a really, really good person. Really, really good art. Really, really good writer. Really, really good art writer, artist. Is he an artist? No, he's a writer. Look at that cover. Look at that cover. That is beautiful. Death in the Himalayas. The Phantoms and Happy Hour. Well, Happy Hour. Oh, that's a bad ride here, Rock Neil. <laughs> yeah, Happy Hour. Okay, we also have that, and we will be keep it will be a themed annual and i'm also really really excited for next year's annual this next year's annual that will be coming out in 2024 and it will be a themed annual and the anticipation to find out just keeps getting more suspenseful yes it just keeps getting more su suspenseful more suspenseful yeah Coming up on this week's show, coming up on this week's special. Okay, we have an exclusive interview with Ash Table Nichols from Art of Play, and we have the adding to the collection. What were my big wins in 2023? Is in the merchandising news, we have a big, big, big announcement, and I'm going to be talking about it right now. So. The Phantom, the Phantom video game, new trailer, the first, tra the first trailer has come out. And I'm going to be talking about it. I'm going to react to it. And let's get on with it. 
and you can now watch my show, the my the joyful show, the enthusiast on Anchor and Spotify, the enthusiast where the passion for the Phantom doesn't waver. In our new episodes weekly on Tuesdays, and I will also be putting a link to the podcast in the description down below, and that's gonna be, that's gonna be, that's gonna be very, very awesome. And now I've organised an exclusive interview with the man behind the new Phantom video game, Ash Table Nichols joins us right now on this year's Christmas special, which is going to be awesome. It is going to be rolling now, and... Today on the channel, we are going to be interviewing the man behind the new Phantom video game. So, how are you, Ash? I am very well, and yourself? I am fantastic. I am absolutely... I am absolutely cracking. Um, and <laughs> now I am... I have organized an exclusive interview with the man behind the new phantom video game ash table nichols joins us right now on this year's christmas special and my first question for ash is is why did you decide to make a new vi phantom video game we as phantom fans we haven't really seen much to do with the character for a very very long time and so why was there a decision on why to make a new phantom video game uh, a couple of reasons we as a studio had been making online games for about 10 years and we were very much coming to the end of that run and wanted to move into console. We'd been sort of, we'd had our Nintendo and PlayStation set up since about 2018. We were definitely looking for a, a title to work with on the console. And, um, you know, licenses for brands vary wildly. Uh, you know, if we, if we wanted to work on a big brand, we could be spending a quarter of a million dollars just on a license. Yeah. So we were trying to find something that was, achievable within our budget range and the phantom had always been a huge part of my childhood and i didn't really ever think that i would be able to get a license like that but um i was watching youtube during the start of the pandemic and i was seeing all these reviews come through for the NECA toys yeah and a lot of the reviewers were younger people and a lot of them hadn't seen the phantom before and they were like super stoked that's it yep I was super stoked about the look of him. They were reading out his description on the box. And they were saying, well, we don't really know much about him. He just looks really cool. And I thought, oh, there's, so there's, there's a little bit kicking off here with, with the Phantom again. And I think there might be an opportunity to create something that will reach a new audience for the Phantom whilst also uh, keeping the, you know, the traditional fans happy. So... That's kind of why I thought that there would be an opportunity. And also, we just wanted to make a game for the... I just wanted to make a game for the Phantom personally for a long time. But, yeah, I just didn't think it would be achievable. And we reached out to King Features after putting together a fairly lengthy document. And luckily, they were really responsive and, and sent us an email back within a few hours, which is exceptionally rare in this industry. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what kicked it off, man. Yeah, and sometimes you might... You... I've sent emails to KFS before and sometimes it takes them like days to get back. So, yeah, that's yeah, fairly yeah. rare. And look, you know, these things take time too. I mean, uh, after yeah, our initial discussion, it took busy. another eight months to get the uh, to get the contract and yeah. everything underway. So, yeah, certainly um, it, it's these things are never a quick turnaround. But, yeah, it was good. Right, yeah. I was watching... I've only just watched the trailer that came out last yesterday, and that just looks awesome. Like it just looks awesome. Thanks, man. It look, looks awesome. Like four hundred years ago, we have a fan we have a pirate attack on this ship, and then the Phantom is his father passes away because there's a big pirate attack on the ship, and they. It's like they um kill the father and then he washes up upon up on this beach and it's just it's awesome. It's like every phantom story starts with that beginning and it's awesome. 
Thanks, man. Yeah, we, we we spent a lot of time, nearly four months, putting that together, that, that sequence. It's 30 seconds. Yeah. And the big challenge was we wanted to get it into a tight 30-second format because it'll be it'll form the start of the game as well. And we know people will like to skip cut scenes. We wanted something that was compelling and short enough that people would actually sit down and, and enjoy it. Um, and if you just read the original comic book version verbatim, it takes about a minute and a half to get through. Yeah. So it was quite a challenge to cut it down, get it impactful, and you know, animate it to a way that um, would want to, the people would want to keep watching it. So yeah. I think we've hit most of the most of the big notes there. Um, certainly, Clark, who who scored the music, uh, did an awesome job in really elevating. The points we wanted to elevate, um, yeah. particularly as the or- the orchestra winds up towards the end when when Phantom comes out of the skull cave, um, those sorts of things are really important to us. Yeah, yeah. I felt like in the especially in like the first maybe thirty or forty seconds of the trailer, it felt like it it was the start of like an action packed movie. That well, that's of, great, man. That's sort of what we're going soundtrack. for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We we really wanted people to think, well, is this a little opening to an animatic or what's going on here? But yeah, that's um that's great to hear. We we wanted to have that comic book styling, but not yeah. necessarily all the tropes that come with making a comic book game. Like we didn't want to have panels and everything dropping down. We wanted to make it cinematic as possible. So I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, I think it it achieved the cinematic the cinematicness of it. <laughs> In question number two, with the new video game coming out next year, can you tell us what it will be like to play it? Will there be special moves, how many levels, well-known characters from the comic books, and anything else that is important? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start with the simple stuff. 15 levels. Uh, Playtime should be somewhere around about the two hours to go all the way through. Okay. Okay. But there will be some components um, in the game and how you play the game will determine the story ending that you receive. So uh-huh. is where we've written two story endings and they're very consequential story endings. So um, if you play the game in a certain way, and we're not going to be telling people how to play the game. We want people to experience it. Yeah, and try and work it out for um, themselves. And try and work it out. Uh, in terms of combos, there will be definite combos in there with the Phantom and Diana using a combination of their fists, their feet, and their and their guns. Um, how you use the guns in the game is very important. There's booby traps and things that you can trigger with with the guns versus just shooting people point blank. Yeah. The the levels start off. The Phantom starts off in. Uh, I'm not going to give away too much of the story, but the Phantom yeah. starts off in in Bangala and ends up in New York. Um, and there's a whole range of environments in between that we're okay. traveling to. I wanted it to feel like a, an Indiana Jones type crusade where oh, yeah. there would be crossing countries and yeah. lots of different themed environments that we completely different from each other. Yeah. Um, That's in terms fun. of, yeah, yeah, we wanted to make the vis- we wanted to make it visually different from level to level. So. Um, when I say 15 levels, there's five worlds and there are three levels in each world. So um, three levels of Bangala, the Skull Cave, that sort of thing. And um, in in between all of these, there will be boss battles in the form of actual combat battles and then also chase sequences. So yeah. you would have seen in the trailer that Hero, the Phantom and Diana are chasing a plane that is taking off out of the jungle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we also like, have a motorbike chase. Um, we also have a speedboat chase. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So lots of lots of cool things like that happening in the game. Plenty of stuff to destroy from the scene. Um, motorbikes you can destroy, cars you can destroy. Yeah. Anything anything the scene has touched is fair game for the Phantom. Oh. You know, he, he's willing. It's very, we've been kept to the moral characteristics of the Phantom, meaning that there'll be other vehicles and stuff in the game that don't have an enemy connection. So you can't just, you can't just go and beat up random things and random people. Um, yeah. You can't just go skull marking everyone. <laughs> no, 
No. Um, and those things don't come of, off. Yeah. In terms of uh, special, uh, we've got a big, big, big reveal towards the end of the game, which I will not get into, but it's huge. Yeah. Uh, Dogai is in. Um, this, it's, it's all based around the classic, um, the, the Sing Pirate Hood, Brotherhood. Um, we've got re- Easter eggs galore from from all parts of the fandom. Um, awesome. You can you can use Devil as a um, as an attack. So if you're getting desperate and you're surrounded by enemies, Devil can come in and and take over. Yep, do his thing. Uh, two players, so you can play as Diana or the Phantom or both. So. It's couch co-op, not online. So, you know, sit down with your with a friend, with your mum, whoever you need to. Um, <laughs> play away. Uh, yeah. I think that covers the core basics, man. Yeah. In terms yeah. of combinations, it's it's he- it's heavy, it's heavy punching for the phantom with, with only yeah. the occasional kick. Diana is more dynamic. She has a lot more movement with her legs and she does yeah. a few more flips and things. We wanted yeah. her to feel like she was more light on her feet. Um yeah. Because Which goes the, back to the movie reference as well. You know? Yeah. Because in the comic books, you see a lot of Diana's, like, a lot of, like, athletic-type abilities. And she, sometimes in the panels, you'll, like, see her, like, swimming. She was an Olympic swimmer back yeah. um, when Lee Falk was still writing the comic book series. And, yeah, she's... I think she, she really... In some storylines, she takes it upon herself to try and solve stuff. Yeah, yeah. We wanted to give her a, a, a big sense of agency in the game. Yeah, that's good. In question number three, I have been wanting to ask you this since I saw Billy Zane post a, like, he had a picture of, he had this post on, he posted a post on his Instagram where he was wearing this interactive video game type suit i wanted to know if billy zane will be in the video game as a voiceover or something else and i know that you can't really give any spoilers away because it's way too early to be doing that sort of stuff um but well let's, you... let me put it this way let me put it this way we are going to be reaching out to billy zane we haven't done so because we weren't really in a position to be able to show him what we really wanted to show him okay. which was the trailer the box art the visual style, it's all come together now. So I can present that to him and say, hey, would you like to be involved in this in a minuscule way or in, in a big way? Um, so that's what we're going to find ways to to get in front of him over the next couple of months. Um, yeah, we, I didn't want to approach him with things half finished and, and yeah. try and give a half-baked idea of what we're up to. Yeah. So um we want him to be involved. There, there is there's a couple of parts that he would do really well. Not necessarily for the Phantom, um, although I would love if he wanted to come in and read for the Phantom. I think um, that that would be incredible. But if he wants a smaller role, something he would just record from his home studio or even from his yeah. phone, um, there would be a couple of things that would be really cool. Awesome, awesome. I've been wanting to ask that question since I saw the post. So that was pretty awesome. He was at a convention near near Anthony Space House, and we, we were so close to trying to get him to. We we're going to go and approach him at that point. That was about October, September, October last year. But the things just didn't quite work out. We didn't have yeah. enough of the content in front of us to be able to wow him. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're in a better position now. Yeah, you can't just like show up half given and give a half Christmas ham to him, you've got to be um, be able to oh, yeah. give it all to him. All Look, we know he's generous it. with his time when it comes to the Phantom stuff, yeah. but we, we wanted to make sure that we, we we were totally legit, you know. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. So question number four is, what platforms will the video games be coming out on? Mm-hmm. So digital release in December will be... Uh, PC and Mac via Steam, yep. uh, PlayStation 4 and 5, maybe not 4 depending on where the, the market is at that point, but mostly 4 and 5, um, and Switch. We will be making attempts depending on how early the Switch, Nintendo releases their new dev kits for the next rendition of the Switch 
um, we may be able to get it out on that console before the end of the year. I'm not promising it, but it, it won't be too far off if we don't make December. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's cool. We are actually developing it on the Switch at the same time as we're doing the PC build as we're building it. Yeah. And we, because there's so many games that come out and the developers just develop it with the PC, then they port it to all the platforms. And the Switch always gets a rough deal. Um, so we wanted to make sure that it works really well on the Switch to begin with. Um, and then if it works well on the Switch, it's going to work well on PlayStation because obviously PlayStation is much more powerful. Yeah. So that's our goal at this stage. Yeah. And then our physical release through Limited Run is going to be uh, Switch and PlayStation only. Uh, Xbox is questionable at this stage just because the sales numbers are so bad and you know, they're so low across the whole platform. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's hard to justify spending the money producing the content when we're probably not going to sell the units. Yeah, um, understandable. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and in terms of digital on Xbox, Xbox have changed all of their requirements for submission of games. So right. when we tried to submit the game earlier on, they said, no, we want to see a trailer. So now that the trailer is ready, we'll be resubmitting it and hopefully we'll get access to launch the game on, on Game Pass. But... um. It's kind of reversed. Nintendo used to be the hardest. PlayStation was in the middle and Xbox was the easiest in terms of getting approvals. And now it's flipped. Switch is the easiest. PlayStation still in the middle and Xbox is, is hard. So, yeah. Right, you yeah. know. I reckon because the, the reason why it, the reason why if you haven't got enough sales going, if you, you've made a product and if you haven't got enough sales, um, going and people buying enough of it on xbox it doesn't it doesn't really make your time worth um potentially putting 100%. that game on the xbox it takes a lot of time to port it to test it yeah and a lot of cost from the developer from the publisher to to prepare the box art prepare the discs and then distribution of it as well um we could be better spending that money on the, the other platforms to make a better product overall and release more copies of Switch and PlayStation out into the market. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon, yeah. In question number five, you may have heard that Moonstone Phantom Comics are coming back next year, which is very, very exciting. It's very, very awesome since they haven't really... They haven't been publishing phantom comics for around a decade and mm. will there be a comic based on the video game is there something like in the works with moonstone uh not at this stage no okay uh, we didn't know about moonstone until we got to comic-con in october and uh we so there might be some cross promotion that we will do. We may advertise the game in Moonstone or try and form a partnership with Moonstone next year to co-promote the game and the comic together. Um, but there'll be no game based on the comic and the comic's All not right. influencing the game at this stage. Um, right, yeah. Obviously, I... if, the game sells, if the game sells really well and King Features want us on board for a second version of the Phantom game, there could be something we would explore, some sort of partnership with Moonstone or um, some way of telling a different story. But at this stage, no, we're, we're kind of acting independently. Yeah. You're just trying to, you're just focusing on the Phantom video game. And if, if anything else comes around, then maybe that could be a possibility. Yeah. 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 We really want this game to do well. We want it to sell really well in the marketplace. We know that the, the NECA figures have sold really well, so we know there's a good fan base for a similar price product. Um, but, yeah, the, the, it, you know, if, if it doesn't sell very well, then it's, it's going to be less likely that there'll be another game, at least yeah. in the short term. Yeah, I thought I'd just ask that question because you never yeah. know what might happen. And yeah. People then might say, oh, Brad actually asked that question. Yeah. Look, as we've started making this game, we've, we've got deeper into the Phantom community and just the publishing comic side of things in general. Uh, it's all about opening more connections for us. Like we, 
we'd come from a background of, of kids entertainment. We knew the showrunners for Ninja Turtles, but we had, you know, connections with the people who created SpongeBob, but we weren't really in the in the comic book realm per se. So, you know, for us it's it's about meeting new people and and trying to figure out if we can work with, you know, different publishers, comic book people and, and try and, you know, be part of that community. Okay. Okay. Um I've got like I've put this a sneaky question in here and it says is there a set date for the new phantom video game coming out or have you not made that decision yet just said december at this stage december um, oh yeah for the digital version but is the there like version, a yeah. set date for like physical yeah so limited run will be doing a pre-order announcement either on or before the digital version launches okay and that pre-order will then help them determine what quantity they need to produce for what region. Yeah. Um, so my advice to fans, we'll be doing like heavy push on social media would be, if you want this game, get on the pre-orders, get it sorted. Because even though it'll be released in stores, the pre-orders will help determine how many copies go out to different stores as well. So we've, we've after chatting with Limited Run, we've said, um, Australia, Sweden, um, and parts of the US and, and parts of the UK as well, sort of like big targeted areas. Um, and then we've got um, South America, um, India as well. But, They're yeah, huge. so we're going to have distribution of the game in, into as many places as possible. But the pre-orders will really help limited run in terms of how many they're going to produce initially. Um and then usually it's about a 12-week process before you're going to see games in store. Yeah. Um, pre pre-orders may go out a little bit quicker. Um, there will also be a collector's edition pack, which we're working with Limited Run on at the moment, which will have, among other things, uh, an art book. It's going to be designed by myself and Anthony Spay. Awesome. So, and, a, and a copy of the soundtrack. Um, and a few other smaller items as well. Uh, there'll be a limited edition signed card by Anthony as well. Um, uh, when I say card, I mean, you know, sli slightly bigger card than usual, you know, like an art piece, a small art piece, almost like a postcard size. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be a little collector's pack in there as well, which will go out in the in the pre-order phase as well. So they can decide how many collector's packs they need to make um, and how many units they need to print um so yeah like i said that pre-order will go out sometime in december and then there'll be a, usually a 12-week period before it, it gets into stores so i'll be okay. looking around about february of the following year before you would see it in EB games or gamestop right yeah um, yeah so phantom fiends if you want to be able to play this phantom video game and be able to enjoy it Hopefully, and I'm hoping everyone gets on board with this Phantom video game because we haven't really had much, Phantom fans really haven't had much to either play or to watch a, a new TV show or Phantom video game or a movie or something. We we'll, we just go and watch the 1996 one. But if you're out there and you're watching this YouTube video and you're watching this fantastic christmas special and you want to be able to hold this christmas this um this video game and you want to be a part of this experience please do go and check out the phantom video game when it comes out on in stores and if you want to be a part of the pre-orders i'm sure there will be a pre-order link somewhere and you can there'll also be a pre-order link on our website. There'll be a pre-order yeah. link on social media. There'll be one on the limitedrungames.com. A whole bunch of stuff there. Um, yeah, so there'll be plenty of notice to get on board with the pre-orders for sure. Yeah, so get on to it. And we will might have a phantom video game that we can experience every afternoon after reading a <laughs> phantom comic. I tell you what, it's uh, it's been twenty eight years since the last Phantom video game came out, so yeah, that should give you an indication on on how big of a deal this is. Yeah, it's it's a very very big deal, and we have 
really, really loved and we have really been really, 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 really excited for what this Phantom video game will offer. And yeah, and yeah, it's going to be awesome. In question number six, will there be tributes to Phantom artists throughout the decades the Phantom has been around for? In subtle ways, yes. We're 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 definitely going to um pay tribute to the, the big prominent artists for sure. Um we're actually asked a very similar question in our meeting with King Features in late October. And my goal is to basically I have to submit a an idea of all the stuff that we're going to be putting in the game yeah. to King Features to get their approval. So that's going to be happening around January, February. And, um, but the answer is yes. To what extent, you know, it will just depend on timings and budgets and everything. But we do have a fairly big Easter egg um, selection in mind for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So they, they would be asking a list so that they know which people you're after and so that they can have enough time to organise all that stuff. Yep. Yeah. In question number seven, what other things will be... Oh, I've, you've already talked to me. Uh, what other things will be coming out with the video game when it is finally released? What other... What other um, sorry, what was the question again? Uh, no, I, had, I had a dog barking in the background. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Not some other weird dog. <laughs> I said in question number seven, what other things will you be will be coming out with the video game when it is finally released? Okay, yeah. So we've got the collector's edition set. Yeah. The soundtrack will be released. Um we'd love to do a one six, one twelve scale uh maquette statue based on a, a unique scene in the game. Um there's a few other bits and pieces that we've got planned. Uh, we're also running a competition uh, for a, a Billy Zane signed uh, NECA figure. Um, awesome. Early in 2024, we're going to be launching a Patreon. So people who want to be involved in the game on a day-to-day -day basis, week-to-week -week basis can join that. We have two tiers. Um, the first tier will get you a credit on the actual in-game credit scene at the end of the game um, as a contributor. And then the, the tier above that will get you um, named as an executive producer. Uh, and then we're going to be offering a whole bunch of competitions, um, monthly um, artwork, unique signed artwork by Anthony. Everything's been hand-drawn, so we've got all this cool artwork sitting in the background here that we're going to be offering out as digital samples. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of stuff there that we're, we're going to be launching. So that'll be the end of January. Um, we'll be... We'll get in touch with you and and all the other fan groups to um to help promote it for us. And that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, a whole bunch of cool stuff that's coming out next year. Like I said, the soundtrack and the collector's pack is the big thing. Um, and then the figure we hopefully will get out as well. Um and yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this stage. It sounds like this Phantom Video game is going to be awesome, and that leads us into our question number eight, and it is, when did you start reading stories about the Phantom, and how has the comic book inspired you in day-to-day -day life? Well, the, I was raised in uh, rural Victoria, and... We didn't have a great deal of pop culture kind of influences where we were living. It didn't really, like the pop culture side of things didn't really hit until Ninja Turtles in the, in the late part of the 80s. Up until then, it was very much the Phantom. Um, my dad gave me all of his comics in a, in a suitcase when I was little like five or six and so they just hung out in my bedroom for for years and so the fandom was all i read 
from a comic book. I didn't read Spider-Man. I had no idea who any of the Marvel universe yeah. was or DC until, until 1989 when Tim Burton released Batman. Then, then I, I got on the Batman because I was nine years old. So I was like yeah. a prime Batman audience. I got on that, yeah, I got on that big time. But when I got to high school, uh, I saw some of the cool kids on the other side of the room playing with cards, and I saw they were purple. I thought, oh, that looks like the Phantom. So I went over to them. I, I summed up the courage to go over to them. And, they were, yeah, they, were, they had Phantom trading cards. I was like, oh, shit, the Phantom is cool <laughs> it, to me it just seemed like it was just something my my dad read you know what i mean didn't really think that it was it was still continuing on um and so i got back into it big time when i was 13 and you know all the cards all of the like the binder that held the cards um i started buying the fruit comics again um i started trading them with the cool kids at school like looking for the foil cards, like the, the all that sort of stuff was it was like an obsession, um, and that lasted a couple of, a good couple of years until I was in later the later part of high school, and then of course Star Wars came back into the scene again with the special yeah. edition and the Phantom Menace, yeah. and so my Phantom obsession has gone from like this over the years, but you know if you were to draw it as a chart, it would just sort of be like a, a gradual increase over time. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, when I saw the NECA figures, I'm like, I've, I've got this is like this is the new phase. This is this is perfect timing. Um, King Features are starting to get back into doing a lot more promotion for the Phantom. It just sort of yeah. made sense. Yeah, I've uh, seen so, a lot of so I've seen a lot of things that have been coming out with on the Phantom that King Features have really been like pushing to try and yeah. get something out of it. Uh, to get to your point about like how it's changed my or how it's affected my life, I think from a story perspective, the detective noir um, kind of side of the Phantom and the slower pace of some of the stories kind of helped ground me in the way I want to tell stories. Um, you know, obviously, when you if you cut from if you do a hard cut from reading The Phantom to going to something like Spider Man or Batman, yeah. it's two different worlds. Yeah, and it's hard to I think adjust. it is a bit hard. It's it's like whiplash. Um, there is definitely an, an older kind of feel, a more mature kind of feel to the um, to the stories, which I really love, um, and the grounded sense of reality to the stories as well, which I've tried to bring into the game whilst also keeping the game really fun. Um, and I think as a dad now in my 40s, I really gel to the um, tradition side of things and the father-son um, handing of the baton and, and generations and all that sort of stuff plays heavily into it because, you know, my dad's 70 now, I'm 40, my son is only four. Um, and so those sort of stories resonate more when I look at everything from that perspective, you know. I, um, so, yeah, I think the fandom is crucial. It's been crucial to my my life growing up. And it's sort of one of those things you don't even think about too much until you start thinking about it and go, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense now. It makes sense how much of an impact it had. It's almost like every critical point in my life where I've needed some creativity, the Phantom's been there. You know, I was, yeah. I used to love drawing the Phantom in freehand when I was a little kid. And, and then in high school, he's there. And then, you know, you, you miss out for a little while. You, it's not quite as in, in front of your mind, but he's back again. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I, I just think he's, he's by far the coolest superhero. Well, not superhero, but you know, the hero type of character. Um, yeah, I would still uh, prefer to read that. I would still prefer to read Phantom over Batman or Spider Man or anything like that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The Phantom is awesome, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> um, in question number nine, and if fans wanted to keep up to date with what's happening with the new video game, where can they go to learn more about it? Yep, so the uh, social media is probably the best, Instagram or um, or Facebook. Uh, I can show you, I can give you all the links to those. 
the the website's been constantly updated. So we just did a new update last week for the trailer that has all the releases of everything and what we're going to be doing on there as well. Then at the end of January, there'll be Patreon, which will be more of our community building exercise to get people invested uh, in the game. Um, And that's probably the, that will be the best way to keep up to date with what's going on, all the new artwork that's coming out. Um, But we've got it. We've now hired a social media manager who will be helping us to make sure that there's constant flow of of information coming out of the game process because, um, there is a lot going on, but we don't necessarily have the time every week to be yeah. preparing yeah. it for social media. So yeah. that's going to be a huge help for us. Yeah, it gets it. It gets um, like you get every job, and then you only have like a small part of time in a day to do all those things. So it gets it gets a bit hectic some days. Yeah, and you, you know, I'm a dad, I'm a husband as well, and you know, all that sort of stuff it sucks away. Um, the amount of time you've got to be spending on um, creating posts for social media. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, we've got we've got all that sorted now. So we're hoping that 2024 there'll be a, a nice, good flow of of um, updates and artwork and and things that we're working on. Awesome. I I I will probably be talking about it. So yeah. Yeah, we awesome. can do another pod. We can do another interview down the track, man, for sure. Rightio. Where can fan Obviously, where can Phantom fans contact you if they have any more questions for you? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's an email address at studio at artofplaygames.com. Uh, I'll give you the link to that too after our conversation. Yeah, we, we get we get requests coming through, people wanting to know individual stores or individual locations that are close to them if they're going to be stopping the game. Um any questions they've got, we you know we can't guarantee we're going to answer them all as quickly as possible, but we'll certainly you know try our best to to get everyone a response back. Awesome, and I would like to thank you for joining us in this moment of history, this moment of fantastical <laughs> history, and back to you in the studio, Brad. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that exclusive interview with Ash Table Nichols and the Art of Play, talking about the Phantom, what could come from the Phantom, and what may be presented in the new Phantom video game. I hope you enjoyed that interview, exclusive interview with Ash Table Nichols. And now we have adding to the collection what were my big wins coming out of 2023? And I'm going to get them for you right now. Well, my big wins out of 2023 would be have to do a lot to do with these folders. And, 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 and. My special, my very special new storage system right now. That would be another big win. And trying to finish of the regal comics that probably won't get finished until next year. What else have we got? Also, we've got new additions up here. They're a pretty big special win. Also some cool signs there. Cool finds, some cool posters. Now, let's have a look in here. For the past couple of years, a big, very big special win is having nearly all my Phantom comics all in numer- all in the right order, and it just it just looks so good. It just looks so very great. We still have some spare folders up there, and we now we have a look at some of the other books that I have. Uh, I can see we've got some Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, we've got a new book there. It's called Doctor No Dan Dare, an annual from 1970. Uh, we've got some new books in there, up in there. We've got some new daily books from a very very special shout out to Jamie Diaz who sent me those. Amazing person he is. We've got a Phantom Diary, we've got some other special 
stuff going on there. We've got the 10th anniversary of Calvin and Hobbes. And we've got a, a limited sign print right there by Douglas Clawbar. We've got some annuals that are in numerical order, numbers, year order. We've got a very, very special, very, very special framed comic there that I will be trying to restore next year. Got some short boxes down, long boxes, short boxes down there, and that's about it. They're my special wins. They're my special wins. And back to you in the studio, Brian. I hope you enjoyed some of the things that, some of the big wins that I've had in 2023 it could not and done. it could some of these big wins could not have been done without without the viewers and without the audience really the audience is a big a big massive part of what i do is being able for people to actually watch my watch the stuff that i actually make is pretty pretty big it's pretty very very big for me and i think one of the things that I, whoa, 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 I just forgot. <laughs> one of the biggest wins that I have, one of the biggest things that I've found this year, and I got it for, I got it for my birthday, is a limited edition ring set. The Phantom limited, a limited edition ring set, number issue number uh, number 60 of 2000 so that I think was my biggest win out of 2023 and if you didn't come in late I will be reviewing this ring set very very soon probably next year and stay tuned for that I think other big wins like include like <laughs> people watching my <laughs> stuff I make some of the stuff is it can be pretty out there but it's some of the other stuff can be I think it's quite, quite funny, funny. Um, yeah, yeah. I, there's some stuff up here that I'm looking at and some of the stuff I haven't even showed on the channel yet and like there's I've got a hero hacks phantom uh, phantom figurine from boss fight studios and I haven't even talked about that yet so yeah, there's still a lot of things on the on this channel that I can talk about, and there's still a lot of people that I would like to interview next year. So so if you're one of those types of people who may like to get interviewed by by yours truly, you can send me a message on Instagram or send me a message on Facebook, um, and we'll 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 sort it out. We'll sort it out. And okay, we're and the also merchandising in the news. We're sorry in the merchandising news. Okay, so we're about to I'm about to react to the first time in seeing this new trailer for the new Phantom video game. So four hundred years ago, pirates attacked and destroyed a great sailing ship. A father sacrificed his own life to save his son. A soul survivor washed ashore. The young boy was nursed to health and swore an oath. I swear to devote my life to the destruction of all forms of piracy yes. and cruelty. May my sons and their oh, sons fall. better. This is the legacy of my family. Oh yeah. I am <laughs> the Phantom. Well, this looks pretty good. Where have you taken him? Who is he taking? Oh, December 2024. This is getting exciting. 
exciting, very, very, very exciting. Okay, what do we take away from this trailer? Okay, so that trailer that I just reacted to looks fantastic. Ash Table Nichols has done a very, very, very fine job on that. That's the first thing we take away from that. And the last, the the last scene before we move into the last, very, very last one that tells us what, when, what month it might be coming out, the video game might be coming out. Where have you taken sort of him? Aims a question. Who? What person harmed the Phantom? Who has this person? Who is this pirate harmed? And I guess that that's the only lingering question. That's the only lingering question we have. And that sort of gives us enough to go off and it gives enough of Phantom fans enough to go off that this video game is going to be awesome. It's going to be fantastic. And that trailer, yes, that trailer was just fantastic. Like the part where the young kid Walker, the young Phantom that is pledging in the Pledging that he's got the skull and he's gotten like this. I well, I pledge, I I pledge for privacy, cruelty, and greed. Description of privacy, cruelty, and greed. Like just stuff like that, and those little, little, tiny I details that people have seen in this trailer just make it the whole just bring that ex excitation excitement to another level it's just it was so good it was so good so good and yeah that that, that was my reaction to one of the biggest trailers one of the biggest trailers one of the biggest moments in a faint a young faint of fans history yeah and we just made history, people. We just made history. And that Phantom trailer was awesome. It's, it, it was awesome. Okay, we have... You can now get a 14% off... 14% off on all things Hermes Press. With the code ENTHUSIAST2022, all in one word. Whether you're looking for something new to read on an afternoon... After a hard day's work, or you're, you've been watching the cricket, you've been watching the Australia take on Pakistan on the, in the Test series, and you're just thinking, oh, I just need a, I just need to take a moment and just read some more Phantom comics, read some more Phantom comics, and then come back to the cricket. And if you want something to new to read when you're not watching the cricket and you're not watching Australia take on the dominance of the Pakistan people, the Pakistan cricket team. Well, there's always a 14, you can get 14% off at Homer's Press and there's always something for everyone at Homer's Press right now. And you can also, as I will say, 14% off when you use the code ENTHUSIAST2022, all in one word. And that should, that should be very, very helpful coming up to Christmas and even after Christmas. This code word is always available for Phantom fans to get the best discount for maybe adding a new book to their Phantom collection. And as always, thank you Hermes Press for allowing me to partner with you for the last couple of years. Thank you for allowing me to partner with you and uh, giving a great offering to Phantom fans and a great offering to add people, add books to people's collections. So I appreciate Hermes Press and what they've been doing and helping me and I appreciate everyone using it. Thank you. And to finish this Christmas special off, what would you like? What do you think? Do you think Billy Zane will be playing in the new video game when it officially comes out next year in 2024 in December. Do you think he might play a role or a small role or something in this video game? I thought it, he was going to, but after this, after the interview and after hearing what Ash Table Nichols had to say, I think that there's a possible chance that he could have a role and there's a possible chance that he may not, and we may not see him, but they, 
we got to be with positive here. And he, there could be a possible chance that he could be in the Phantom Video game. We'll just have to wait and see until December in 2024. And if you enjoy Phantom Cave Reviews, subscribe to see more great videos like this. This was a great video. This was an epic, an epic, an epic, I say, Christmas special. And it's a jolly full. As always, keep Phantom Keith. I wish you a merry, 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 ho, 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 merry, merry, merry Christmas to everyone that watches on this YouTube channel. Whether you're just tuning in this year or you're, you have been a long standing audience member of our YouTube channel, I would like to say thank you for all the help from tw in 2023. You do not go with, you don't go missing when I do these videos because I love what I do and I appreciate everyone and watching the stuff I make. Some of the stuff can be fairly funny as I said earlier and some of the stuff can just be outright, just outright outright. But you get those hard jobs, so... Yeah.